worship Him in truth and in spirit and exalt and glorify the name of Jesus. Let's begin with prayer. Father, we thank You so much that we are in Your presence. We'll experience Your glory and Your grace. That we'll experience Your peace and Your joy. Father, I pray that as we do that, that our souls would be stirred deep within us. And that we would testify and praise our great God today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. white candle. It reminds us that God sent his son Jesus to be the light of the world. By facing Jesus, God calls us to leave the darkness of the world and to enter unto the light of his glorious kingdom. To open their eyes so they may, may turn from darkness to light and from the domination of Satan to God. That they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. Acts 26, 18. As the light of the world, Jesus said to his followers, You are the light of the world. Let your light shine before men in such way that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Matthew 5, 14 through 16. As his light grew, the wise men to Bethlehem to worship Jesus the Christ the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. His light today draws us here to worship Him. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus, to be the light in the darkness of our hearts. Help us today to understand and see the light of Jesus so that by faith, if we shall believe in him, we will worship him, love him, and obey him. Holy Spirit, change us so the light of Jesus will shine in us and through us so that others may see it and believe in Jesus, worship Jesus, love Jesus, and obey Jesus. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen.
Indeed, we give all praise and honor and glory to our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you take your hymn, uh, your, your Bibles, I'm sorry, I'm thinking about singing way too much this morning. Turn to Luke chapter 2. We'll read God's Word together. Luke chapter 2. When you find it, let's stand in reverence to the reading of God's Word today. Luke chapter 2, verse 13. God's word says, and suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told to them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Father, bless the reading of your word today. May it be active. May it be sharper than any two-edged sword. May it pierce deep within our souls. Father, may it bring to us conviction. May it bring to us challenge. May it bring to us encouragement. And may it equip us for the work that you called us to. Bless this service today and all the services that are meeting, where believers are meeting in your name. I glorify you today in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Now if you take your hymnals and turn to number 86, a little town of Bethlehem, hymn number 86.
sing. And we'll stand and sing all three verses of Heart of the Herald Angels.
accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the future. Because there's a lot of things I'd like to change, and I know they're out of my hand, they're in God's hand. And that's where I put them, and that's where I'm going to leave them. Amen. Anyone else? One more thing. I don't want to leave my wonderful husband out. Uh, if it wasn't for him, you know, I wouldn't be able to do that. You know, he takes care of everything, not everything, but most things at home. He does the maintenance around, and he, he you know, mop the floor and vacuum them. You know, he does those things, and I'm just so appreciative of him for doing it. And I just love him so much. Amen. Do you do the laundry, Ken? He says no. He has every once in a while. Yeah. I've told some of you ladies how I used to do laundry when I was single, and praise the Lord, hope doesn't let me do stuff like that. Amen. I can go day. now? Yes. Okay. I just want to thank him for being born for all of us. I honestly do not know where I would be right now if he had not died for all of us. He... Over the past year, he has taught me lessons that I needed to know in ways I never thought I'd learn them. He has taught me that I need to care more about others besides myself and put them before me, and that I actually need to start doing better around the house and helping my mom more. He has taught me that this is where I need to be every Sunday instead of sitting at home waiting to do something with my friends. And he's helping me spread his love and his beauty to everybody I come in contact with. He's helped me out at the house with my mom. I've been helping her more, and she's been understanding me more. And I have learned all these lessons. And if it wasn't for him, I would not have known these lessons. And I would be in a very bad place right now, and I would not be here with all of you. I just want to thank him for all that. Amen. Anyone else? Turn on the air conditioners on, Jay. Okay. Anyway. Um, Talk louder. Some of y'all know my history. Some don't. I've had a lot of strokes in the past two years. And the doctors still don't know what caused them, why they're being caused, whatever. But I, I thank you for keeping me around because he's not finished with me yet. And yesterday was another blessing in our family. One more of our grandchildren came back home to be with the family from now on. And we got to see him. That was gone 17 years. So, we talk about miracles on Christmas. And he he gave us the greatest miracle that we could have. For our father. And I claim him to be my father. has happened, a lot still may happen, but I don't worry about it anymore. And it's been six months since I've been back to the hospital with one of these things. And I thank him for that. Amen. Well, I'd like to praise the Lord that uh, for his faithfulness. Uh, with COVID last year, with it changing sleep habits, with it changing injury, energy levels, with it changing all kinds of stuff. He's been faithful to still wake me up every night to spend time with him. Uh, and if it wasn't for him, Haley, I, I'd sleep right there with him, you know? And I need it because, you know, some people look at preachers and deacons and leaders of the church people that are seen. I remember as a new Christian, even before I became a Christian, I sat in the pews. Uh, I thought the pastor did no wrong. He was the epitome of goodness and kindness and gentleness, all that Jesus had to offer. But we're just like y'all and we struggle. We have our self that we right, struggle with just like Paul. And uh, 
I'm, I'm glad that he is faithfully gentle with me and that he understands me. And through all that, he loves me because he could kick me to the curb and be totally justified in it. But his love and his compassion and his goodness for us is far beyond our imagination, far beyond my ability to talk about it. I don't understand it and probably never will. But that's not important. I just know I experience it every day of my life. And I praise him for that. <clears throat> Amen. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. I'm just amazed at what the walk with the Lord is, is really like and how things are new and fresh every day. Um, you may not know, but in a choir, I'm very timid. I've always been, I only took choir in school because I couldn't draw on the table. <laughs> Art. So, um, <coughs> but watching how the Lord works through people and, and Martha's willingness because God called her to to step out of her comfort zone has been a tremendous witness. And I'm slightly handicapped. I rely, I can't hitch. So you get what you get. And so I, this is the ear that I hear whatever support music comes from. Well, there wasn't anybody over there. And, but all week long, well, probably ever since we started singing, this could be hotter. This same song that we sang today has been over and over and over. I mean, almost 24-7. I mean, I lay down at night and I said, Lord, I've got to sleep. <laughs> and, um, but when, you know, we looked at the scene, are we going to sing this morning? And the Lord kept saying, you've been doing it all week. <laughs> you know, so, okay, Lord, here we go. You know, what you did is what he did. And I just praise the Lord for that because, you know, I can't believe I got up there without the people all around me. And, but I was singing to God's glory. Amen. And I was looking at Martha. She took the smallest we were. And we did what we were supposed to do. And I just praise the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. It's a hard lesson for us to learn. Hold on, Miss Ruby. It, it's a hard lesson for us to learn. Because we judge things by numbers. It's not the number that counts. It's the heart and the spirit that counts. Amen. Amen. We've got more sitting here today than Jesus had that stuck with him. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Because if you read scripture, it says all his, all there's points where his disciples left him. It's not talking about the twelve apostles. It's talking about the others that were following along. They left and went home. <clears throat> it's the spirit and the heart. Amen. 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 Miss Ruby. I just want to praise.
then we remain the same blog. And so my, I have three grandchildren that are getting older. Um, and I have three that are, that are really young. And so the older ones used to kind of put on a little play and act out Christmas stories. And this year, you know, I thought, you know, these little ones are like those, you know, they haven't done that before. So I'm going to just instigate it and, and have them dress up like Mary and the angel and do this. And so, so I talked to them, and one of them's 10, and she said, I'm too old to dress up and do that now. And I said, well, okay, you can read the Bible story then. And so one of them dressed up as Mary, and I gave her a baby doll, and the other one put on a white dress, and she was the angel. And so my 10-year-old read the Christmas story, and I said, you can read out of Grandpa's Bible, and I gave it to her. And she read it, and they stood there and just acted like little little angels, and, you know, did their little part. And um, that was just really so special, and I, I just want, you know, to continue doing things like that with my family so they'll always know what Christmas really means. Amen. Amen. praise to Jesus. Okay. Well, we're going to move on then and worship the Lord. If we've finished worshiping Him with praise and testimony, we're going to worship Him with our offerings and our tithes. So if you'll take your hymnal and turn to hymn number 91. <coughs> Hymn number 91, Silent Night, Holy Night. We'll sing this as we bring our tithes and our offerings to the altar and place them in the place this morning. chapter 1 again this week. The unspeakable joy that we don't have the words for. The unspeakable joy that we can't seem to get our heads around. Why in the world would God Almighty take into account the blip on his radar of Hugh Falls' life. With all the billions of people running around on the earth and all that they need and all that's going on, why would he be so attentive to me to habitually wake me up every night to listen to him? That is beyond my comprehension. That is beyond anything I can explain to anybody. And as we look at 1 Peter chapter 1, we'll start with verse 3 today. 
We'll see some reasons for this unspeakable joy that we have. Joy is not a fleeting thing. It's something that he plants within us through the Holy Spirit. Happiness is fleeting. But when I know in my life I struggle the most with my joy, not because it's not there, but because I get my eyes off of him and his spirit within me and focus on things and situations around me. I'm dealing with happiness there and I struggle because those things don't make me happy. But if I can stay focused in the midst of all that on him and who he is and what he's done for my life, the joy is there and it begins to well up in my soul. That's why you've heard me, some of you have heard me say that we all have the Holy Spirit. We just need to turn him loose in our lives and let him do what he wants to do. Amen. In verse 3, we see an abundant mercy from Jesus. It says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy, His mercy that abounds, His mercy that overflows, His mercy that increases and increases and increases, hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. If Jesus didn't raise himself from the dead, if he rose himself from the dead, he got up out of that grave and came back. God the Father gave him the power to do it. If he did not accomplish that, all this, Christmas, the worship of baby Jesus, would be in vain. You see, we worship Him and we celebrate His birth and we remember Him and it's a wonderful thing. But if He came to do a work, He came to seek and save Hugh Folds from Himself and His seed. He came to seek and save each one of you from yourself and your sin. You see, our sin is our unbelief in Him. Our sin is our disobedience to Him because of that unbelief. That's why He gives us His Spirit to transform our minds so that we will begin to think like Him and understand Him and His ways. That's why we need to spend time with Him and we need to seek Him daily and diligently so that He can do this work in us. It says that He has uh, applied this abounded mercy to us, this love, this forgiveness to a lively hope. <coughs> I have a lot of hope in life. I hope my car breaks every morning. You ever got up in the morning and you go out to go to work and you're, on t you're pressed for time and you turn that key and nothing happens, not even a little click of a starter. Your hopes are dashed at that point because it was in the car crank, right? I have a lot of hopes like that. When we go to the doctors, we hope that he can tell us what's wrong and he can tell us what to do to fix it, do we not? And sometimes he shakes his head and says, I, I just don't know. And that's not the answer we're looking for, is it? We have hopes that discourage us because they don't come to pass. We have hopes and dreams that we live with and they never seem to come to fruition. Some of us are old enough to look back on our lives and say, I wish. We wish something had been different. But this hope that he gives us is a lively hope. It lives within us. It moves within us. And it creates in us a new person with a new outlook with a new focus and we don't look at things the way we used to. This lively hope rests in Him who is alive and well and, and in heaven interceding for us, doing the will of God. This hope lives within us through the power of the Holy Spirit. 
So it's not just wishful thinking. It's not just hoping the car cranks type of stuff. It's an assurance that this is going to happen because he rose from the dead. It's through his resurrection that we know this is true. If Jesus didn't come out of the grave, then he died just like any other man who was buried. That's right. Amen? That's right. If Jesus didn't come out of the grave, then he was crucified just like hundreds of thousands of other men, women, and children were by the Romans. That's right. Amen? That's right. He's no different. He showed the power of God. He showed the love of God through his resurrection. And that ignites the hope within us. And we have great joy because of it. There's nothing else in the world that can give us this hope but Jesus. Amen. There's no other religion in the world that can give us this hope but Jesus. You see, all other religions are me trying to do good enough to offset my bad so I can get into heaven. If I work hard enough, and please don't say this around me, if I... If I work hard enough, is the philosophy of the day in a lot of people's lives and in a lot of churches. If I work hard enough and do the right things, then God will let me into heaven. No, He won't. It's only by the blood of Jesus Christ and the fact that He rose from the dead and showed the power of God and the love of God and showed God Himself. What did Jesus say to His disciples when they said to Him, we want to see the Father? He said, you've seen Him. Hebrew says he is the exact image and, and stamp of God Almighty in the flesh. It is through this resurrection that we experience the abundant mercy of Almighty God. Praise the Lord that Jesus rose from the dead. Verse 4, we see that not only do we experience the abundant mercy, and we have hope in that because of the resurrection of Jesus, but we see that he raised us and he's going to raise us to an inheritance in heaven. There's a lot of us that have experienced our family members passing away. And then there's the will that comes out. And all the joy of having to see that will fulfilled. If you've ever had to go through it, you know it's not a lot of joy sometimes, right? It's a lot of work. It's a lot of hoops to jump through. It's a lot of delays. It's a lot of uh, struggles as you're trying to pay their bills that were left behind. It's not always what it seems like. But after the will is read and everything's taken care of, the inheritance comes out what that person left behind. What that person hoped to give and to be used wisely and correctly as a blessing to those that they left it to. Jesus, when he rose from the dead, he has granted us an inheritance in heaven, an inheritance of eternal life, an inheritance of glory, an inheritance of righteousness, an inheritance of joy eternal with him. An inheritance of all the riches of our wonderful, loving, merciful, powerful God that he can offer. But most of all, himself. We inherit a place in heaven that he's prepared for us. And in that place we will rest with him and abide with him throughout all eternity. What joy. Because this is based on the resurrection of Jesus Christ and not what Hugh Foles does, not what you do. It says it is incorruptible. Don't y'all just love rust? It's everywhere, isn't it? And it's free. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to work for it. It's just there, right? The only problem with rust is it's a sign of deterioration. It's a sign that something is aging, changing, and isn't what it used to be. That's not the inheritance of Jesus that he offers us. 
It is incorruptible. It's never going to be corrupted by anything in all creation. Amen. I used to wonder about, uh, y'all live here, but the first time we moved here, I'd go down to Carolina Beach and Curie Beach, and I was amazed that they had all these air conditioners fenced in down there at the beach. Just sitting there. Y'all y'all seen them, haven't you? They were down there on the right. I don't know if they still have them down there. Big old air conditioners sitting over in the sand, and they've got a big fence around them so nobody can bother them, and they're just sitting there. And then one day it was explained to me that they were testing metals and paint against the salt corrosion that comes off the sea. And if you've ever been to the beach and you've been in down at the beach and you parked your car in the parking lot there, when you come back you got to clean your windshield just about it, don't you? Because it's covered. You see it's thick down there, isn't it? And we don't even notice it. But they are trying to figure out ways to stop the rust and the corrosion. Brothers and sisters, if you are saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, if you have this joy in you, you have an inheritance that is never going to be corrupted by anything. Amen. Because it's been painted with the blood of Jesus. You might want to look at it that way. If you do, that's fine. It's been covered by his blood. And there's mm -hmm. nothing better. It says that it's undefiled. Before I met Jesus, I was defiled. I was dirty in my soul. And so were you. The hardest thing working with children is if you ask them, a bunch of third graders, do you love Jesus? Even though they may not know him or know anything about him, they'd say, yeah, I love Jesus. Because little children love everybody, do they not? Oh, that we could get back 